This is for everybody who has already met their Karmic Soulmate Twin Flame Soulmate and for those of you who are still thinking who is he? Who is she? Where can I find them? So before I start, I'm going to just explain to you the spread that I have developed for this occasion. So here are the significators that I'm using for this particular reading. Remember, significators mean that this is going to be the same for every sign. The reason why I'm choosing them, it's sort of like the category that I really want to find the answers to, as if you're in a bookstore and you find a book with this title. So let me explain to you the significators that I'm choosing. The first one is Luna. Luna is going to tell me about the darkness and everything that maybe still didn't surface, maybe things that you don't know, maybe things that you should know. Then we have Solar Deity. Solar Deity is going to tell us what you should know. Maybe there is like still somewhere lingering, maybe it is too bright for you, maybe it's too close to your eyes, but you're going to realize that maybe you know that. Then we have Reason. Many of us are asking, why? That's the hardest question as a therapist and as a reader to really answer why. Because we people we don't really make too much sense when it comes to love. So we're going to try to answer it within this card. Then we have the card guidance. Let's see, because it's your mirror soul, what do you need to find out about this person? If you guys still didn't read my introduction to this series, please check somewhere in this corner before you proceed because it's going to tell you really how and what I see it. I see it as a mirror and that's why this is called Mirror Healing ser Series. Then we are getting to the tower and the tower is going to tell us about what needs to break. It is like always a time that certain things cannot grow anymore and maybe they cannot grow because they're not sustainable. Maybe, you know, we need to kind of change us. Maybe they need to change. Whatever it is, we're going to discover it in this category. And the chariot, a lovely card with pushing it forward. Where do we go? Which turn do we take? And then let's check the significance of all of this. Two of chalices. Is there a kiss that is going to happen or what at this point of time is karma telling us? So guys, shall we start? Gemini's and welcome to your August September twin flame reading so let's start let's start with the baseline interestingly enough it looks like you are either moving away from deception or realizing certain parts of you that maybe have caused the situation okay let me explain don't jump at me you know sometimes especially women we get to be too nice and too agreeable and actually that's the very um, same quality that have been specified why women don't climb the corporate ladder because of being agreeable weirdly enough we are still fighting those of us who are not that agreeable who didn't manage to climb so far but then they seal you well you know you have to kind of wrap it nicely where Anyway, let me not go, go on that tangent. That's probably going to be a topic for my podcast on my other channel. So by the way, guys, join my other channel. I'm kind of like getting a whole bunch of topics over there for kind of like healing sessions. So deception is basically the card to me. As you can see, both of them are wearing a mask. In, in I think in Greek, um, personality means mask. It means um, 
and, and I can go much deeper in the subject if you're in my school, that kind of like would be one of the topics for discussion where we kind of like have this ego and every religion, every pretty much philosophy is telling us that we need to shed that ego. Even if you go with the latest, let's call him prophet, Eckhart Tolle, whom I love dearly, uh, another fellow Aquarian, who kind of like really talks about it, like it's not the words, but it is the space in between the words. It is that general kind of attitude of kindness, right? Where we kind of like create that kind of persona and you can really see it the higher the people climb that ladder, the more they're going to have that ego or that persona. And it is basically the very thing that is making you, you're kind of caught. You are actually like trapped animal in that situation because almost like um, it's like you are putting yourself that somebody is pulling all this kind of like marionette kind of like moves on you, but you enslaved yourself. So the session is really talking about us needing to recognize which parts of us are just trying to be uh, what we really are not. In the beginning of relationships, sometimes we, well, sometimes, most of the times, we really want to put our best foot forward, and that's normal. And that's why it really doesn't count very much. It's probably the best you can see from the person, and it's kind of like, if that's the expectation, eh, forget it, right? Because we know that from that point, it's going to go down, but it is like how you land. Is it going to be rough landing, or is it going to be soft landing? Because I see over here that you guys, look at this, you have these five of swords that are the card. Very interesting rendition in this deck. And I always go with what I see in a deck. Sure, you know, the cards have their meanings, but you know, each tarot deck is kind of like very specific in how things are done. They do have this rose as a motive in this deck. And if you really look closer, all these swords are kind of like killing all the roses. Check this out. This entire land is devastated. There is some water over there, as you can see, barely showing, but it's still not doing anything to replenish this kind of stuff. And these five beautiful flowers that have been here around have been just basically destroyed. So this is telling me that mental processes have probably killed something something good things that maybe was going or maybe uh, in the end it was look he just wants to grab all the dominion for himself it kind of it's pentagrams it's not a circle otherwise I would say it's Leonardo da Vinci kind of a thing right the pentagram of men but it's definitely talking about those five senses that it, it kind of like feels there was not emotional nourishment over here and in the other decks it's really talking about a person who um, who wins at a cost, at a big cost. And that winning is basically so bad that, you know, we kind of have this opinion that winning is good. But in the end, um, if you win and you cause this nuclear devastation, or I call it, you know, throw a nuclear bomb in your garden to clean the weed and phew, you wipe out the whole freaking town, that's not the point. And here is like somebody is truly not getting a point. So I don't know if you are in the devastated category because it does look like there are lots of issues. It could have been third party or rejection. So you're Gemini. I mean, I'm one air sign talking to another air sign. I'm a double air sign. So you probably kind of like, like me, get caught in these mental processes. I personally go in analysis. Mm, why is this? And sometimes that analysis goes way, way, way far. Because I find, <coughs> excuse me, that the more that I know, that the more analysis I can give. So sometimes it's also uh, an art to know when to stop and when you're going in negative space. So here, again, we see the rose, bear it. Look at this, two bottom cards are kind of like telling the same thing. Maybe you are just are recovering from something that had to be let go. Something that kind of like had its limits because look at the walls and look at the clouds. Something really reached a point where, you know, maybe messages were not hit and if you're claiming who you are, especially if you guys are mothers, especially if you guys sort of like rule your own household, um, it kind of like really feels weird with all the obligations, single mothers especially, 
with all the obligations that you have, uh, emotional, mental, financial, that somebody is actually putting down their, their own kind of like sets of problems, their own issues. I call them Klingons, right? So this I started with, you have to recognize within you because the air signs tend to be kind of like really brainy and tend to kind of like really like prefer compliment that, hey, you're smart, you're clever versus, oh, what a beautiful dress. Okay, dude, just go away kind of a thing, right? Yeah, of course it's a beautiful dress. I thought about it kind of a thing, right? So here, this is also not to forget that maybe you're discovering that somebody else is also wearing masks. So that's why you always have to rebalance this with you having kind of like these two people representing your sign um, that maybe they are also kind of like hesitant or they have not given you everything they did. Now, when people tell you, oh, I'm like this, or I'm like this, do not jump into, oh, no, no, you're not like that. Pause and a s kind of like take in what they said because people will tell you the truth. Why would I tell you I'm a thief if I'm not, right? So if somebody tells you something like that, you're jumping, no, 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 you're not. That shows that kind of like presence of guilt, that shows this presence of, <laughs> in, in the law, they call it presence of criminal activity, right? So when somebody tells you like that, they're like, actually, I think it was, what was her name, this, um, uh, she, uh, Zaida or something she kind of like had that book written and I don't remember the name but sort of like she was saying trust them when they tell you who they are you kind of uncover and so when I see people swearing when I see people being rude to people calling people names they are telling you who they are they're telling you that you to them is just like those people they are misreading so Deception means like really kind of like this is calling for you to get the clarity to remove your mask and to remove their mask and kind of like really see what you can deal with because this five of swords is kind of like that card that kind of does happen when people are having roles. You guys don't fit into the role really well because you think so it is maybe time to kind of like see what is still kind of like blocked in the situation. So let's see. Oh my gosh, you have two kings, both reversed, and sudden wealth. And that's something hidden. Like somebody, and look at this, you have both 11, which is we are in a year number 11, and 777. Seven, seven. You can go to my website if you're interested to learn about all these kind of like digits. I kind of like did have some kind of like really quick overview, like 111, 222, 777. What this really, really means. It's a little bit more complex. And if you're interested, maybe you should enroll my numerology classes. But this is kind of like really telling that, look, you have two kings, both reversed. So one king is like not in the kind of like good mood, let's put it kind of like then that's what you get you get them to basically that got up on the wrong foot so this was like a double whammy over here from what I see so of course they kind of like have astrological signs in this deck they're a little bit differently they're Capricorn and Cancer but this is definitely to me more or less talking about the energies that are coming through energy was like maybe they were like financial kind of like support this is definitely probably a married guy or taken guy and this guy is a uh, same thing but highly manipulator in terms of emotions this guy doesn't have to be married but this guy would paint a picture of you being the one and you would fall in love with this person that would just kind of like disappear right on you and left you basically devastated that's what i'm saying they're like there were like possibly two people in your life or one person who was like like levering between these kind of like two different things over here this is calling for you to sudden wealth is maybe a realization of this sometimes you know what they say better to be you know um forewarned is forearmed kind of a thing so that's kind of like what i see maybe you had a number of people who woo you and maybe realization that you owe it to yourself to be true because so many people go through life playing roles that are being just assigned it almost looks like we are born naked and then just imagine instead of clothing that everything is basically you have to do that you have to do that you have to do that 
I don't really even think we have to be trained. We kind of know for sure. You can see these like movies of the dogs. Did you do that? Immediately, you know when you're doing something wrong. It is more that I think that we would have to be trained to self-correct kind of a thing. So let's see what you guys know. <laughs> you know that the breakup happened. You know that it's probably not easy for you at all. And that this is kind of guiding you to a new path. It's kind of like you're seeing the light. I guess it was not hard. Uh, pardon me, it wasn't easy from what I see because certain things just maybe came out of nowhere and it could be even you guys that you call the breakup because this is very known and you are kind of like developing this huge kind of like level of you know self-understanding. In this deck the strength is 11 not eight like in the other decks so now you have like two 11s showing up when you're number 11 and i really see this month as a really big repair month for all of us not just for you in this particular deck she also is if you notice naked she kind of like is holding this um, t-shirt with a lion and she's saying you know what I'm strong, but I really don't need a shield to show my strength. And the reason why she has this kind of like cobra right into her, her crown chakra, it's snakes are in Western, Western kind of like society, connotation is usually negative and it's somebody who is scheming. But snake has also a really, really good connotation, which talks about that Kundalini effect, that kind of like stream of energy that kind of like coils through our chakras. Now there is like a little kind of thing on this in this card, look at this volcano. And this is like one of the most possible destructive things on our planet. Um, it's kind of like nothing that we can control, nothing we can do with literally with all the technology, everything we are helpless. So this imagine what kind of strength is kind of like really needed to kind of really just kind of pull it in and, and she's like channeling and it's kind of like showing this kind of channeling in. So I think you're really taking and this is also representing the sign of Leo. So maybe, you know, because we are going through basically the passing of Leo right now in um, astrologically, this is kind of like all of us always when we enter this new sign is give us like, hey, you know, Leos are generally this and I, I really feel for you you need to kind of like be learn you need to learn to put yourself first to be on that pedestal because it looks looks to me you didn't whatever the issues were that you're maybe craving in your relationship like most of us love but the end point just like in mathematics you can get to that end point many different ways two plus two is four but it's also one plus one plus one plus one one plus two plus one one plus three minus five plus you know um nine so there are like many different kind of like venues to get to the same point over here so maybe some people are getting there with trying to live in authentic life what I mean by that, sometimes we are not even aware of that because we are all pretty much trained the same. You have to get up in the morning, you kind of have to go and work and take care of the family, clean the place. We kind of like have pretty much the same programming. Just like think about it, Windows, all right, whatever, Mac OS, whatever is kind of like more appropriate for you. And how about for a second to try to use a different programming system? you know yeah we might be lost in it initially but we will probably get uh, a ability to understand really really quickly so this is kind of like where you are at you're kind of like in that um in that like mindset of repositioning yourself even though i do see that kind of like it was destabilizing and somebody let's say winning it over and i don't know who broke this relationship up it almost like it's immaterial because you guys in spite of all this devastation you are kind of like having your goal you are having this perspective so let's see the reasoning behind that courthouse the moon and three of pentacles well courthouse i don't know if some of you are really dealing with something that is uh, legal matters but courthouse also tells me about something official in terms of relationships it usually tells me hey are we together are we not together 
I am I'm European and in my 40s I guess when I was dating well I'm not on the market yet but maybe I'll be one day but let me just tell you like some background when I was dating when I was like teenager and like in my early 20s it was always meeting somebody in a club or in a bar or, or at an event and then you would go on a date it was uh, you know after that date kind of like assumed that this is monogamous and it could be monogamous just for another day but it was monogamous we are here together so it was like serial monogamy one kind of like person after another or whatever right and exploring the aspects exploring kind of like hey you know what do you think and sleeping with somebody on a third date was like unheard of because first of all, of course, this is like old system being a slut. I don't even think in that direction, but I think it did give us opportunity to really see the person and to really see if somebody's there for you, to support you and somebody there for you, how they react toward the other people. And it was also normal to meet them with the other people because you will always kind of look out in that club with other people, not alone. And of course, that has changed dramatically with all this kind of like modern media and give us all headaches because people can be really wordsmith, but they can be awful people. And the biggest problem that is like starting to happen is that these people are really broken souls that you pick them up on all these kind of like sites. They either are having their agenda and they're here for a quick move in and out or they just broke up and they're healing their soul with, hey, if you are the toy, which just happens. So be very, very careful over here. If you guys are kind of like either involving yourself with somebody who kind of like has, because courthouse is usually a process that happens from the past. And this is like where it's culminating, right? Something. And I think it's going to be reasons are, are we building this together? Are we doing this together? Are we in for a long run, right? Because sometimes you actually even go to marry either in the city hall or in the courthouse. And the moon is kind of like probably giving me this clue. Moon is always about shadows. It's about lunacy. Um, it can have like a million and one ways. And one of the ways that I see here is absolutely um, jealousy. To me, this card always connects with jealousy because it's kind of perception of what is happening. Again, we are going back here. Have you been transparent with this partner? Was there always an issue that things are just not not like you agree one thing and the second thing happens and then there is like gaslighting right kind of like and gaslighting is kind of trying to uh, kind of like convince you into something that it is like it's instead of the moon somebody's telling you it's the sun right it's also talking about a, a lack of probably solidarity and sympathy right so it is kind of like really interesting because like the moon, Pisces, right, as you can see them here swinging, are also able to see into darkness. So this is why Pisces is ruling all these kind of like hidden currents of our psyche and, you know, kind of like the urges that we sometimes cannot explain. So Pisces people are also able to absorb and reflect the emotions of the others. Sometimes we meet people who are really good at that, not necessarily because of empath, like most Pisces are but because they are like con men and by reading other people's emotions they're just simply mirror them they're not taking them in and putting them out they're not here to give you this big hug they're there to get something right so be very careful about here about sensitivity or maybe this is just simply saying um, kind of like there was it could be that maybe, especially if you're a woman, you were dating somebody who who was culturally conditioned and couldn't really display anger or any other emotion, sorrow, right? And hence, they're trying to be very analytical in the situation. And by them not opening up and by them not being vulnerable and by them not telling the real reason, they're like in there just like simply into that very self-protective mode, right? So here... I don't know if you can see it. Look at all the stars uh, arranged around the moon. It's almost like 
hours of a clock. So time is like really perceived as a cycle, I think. Um, I always claimed that to me time was like really not a cycle, to me it was more like a spiral. And I was like, it, it was just like I get this like weird ideas in dreams, there's like nothing scientific behind that. but. Just like I'm trying to explain, like, I mean, the spiraling of the time, we keep having the same thing coming back in Mercury retrograde, it almost like looks like on that spiral and that cycle, you kind of like get to the same point. So this is like really telling you guys that maybe you need to let go of certain patterns. This is a call for letting go unless, unless it can be kind of like worked to be transparent and to be really truly supportive of each other's emotions. So guidance, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and I think it was a six of cups card, oh my gosh, and oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and I know Lati is going to say now, oh my gosh, she's saying oh my gosh, so here we go, child, the tower, and seven of cups, I just really laughed at this, because this is kind of like bowing down to the goddess, and this was basically the card of six of cups, and I'm not so sure which one this is, probably the High Priestess, because there is like looking a uh, lots of hopes going through his head. This is like where we really, really want something. The child can definitely talk about physical child if you have one. And you might actually have issues with a child, especially if the child is in connection with your um, inquiry. And but child can also talk again. It is a nine about a shift, about shift towards something, um, something new, um, shift toward this like the courthouse. Something from the past is now resurfacing in a different direction. It could be a, a birth of a new idea, kind of. But it could be also something that is now having a new form. Maybe you really thought that, you know, the things are kind of like landing, because it's the guidance, it's telling you be like a child. Be like a child, because child that comes into this kind of like tower moments, right? You see this like, I mean, eye of Ra, like everybody sees us, like that's this karma universal, we will be seen uh, no matter where we hide and how we hide our stuff. It's saying that you can kind of like really bounce this off your back right and kind of like this is telling you look do not let go of your dreams right because both of these cards are sevens there is like a spiritual development that is really going on over here and this is talking about possibly you're still thinking about this person possibly you're still thinking about the turbulence you need to kind of like start think differently instead of like going into all these hey, uh, you know, I cannot live without him, and I miss her so much. You need to kind of like start to look almost like a detective. Okay, what has happened here? And have my needs have been met? That kind of a thing. Because the other card you've got here is free yourself. It's like this unicorn that is not you know, unicorn at all. It's so sad, not even having ability to express, you know itself. It's time to take back control of your life. So let me see what can blindside you in this process. Oh gosh. You're having unexpected income, but you also have a death and you also have nine of swords, which to me it's also kind of a death card because look what is happening to a poor fellow. He's like stabbed right through it. Everything seems to be collapsing. And we all had days like that. And I think the snake over here, uh, it could also mean wisdom that we are, we just really were not wise. We didn't listen and things progressed to the point that progressed because the shelter was here, as you can see, and we didn't go for it. Or maybe kind of like we thought we were going to get there, but we didn't. So obviously, you know, there is like something unexpected and you guys will need to rebounce this month over something. The death card, well, some good things will happen, you know, play lottery and again you have a nine. It looks like that you lived one cycle that you're now finishing. So finishing things is like quitting a job. Do you want to tell F you, your boss, which most of us have been in that situation, but, you know, you were thinking, not really saying, or, hey, I want a lottery, la, 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 or you're not going to burn that bridge, no matter how bad situation it was, and 
by that you're going to keep your dignity and you see some people think and I had my share of this as well that if you don't say things that the cluelessness is going to continue and that's very true but even if you say this do you think the people would change because this is really calling for basically transformation of something and maybe the transformation is going to be simply because it's, if it's reversed, it talks about unnecessary suffering. I think it was upright. Um, but something that maybe is going to shift in you, again, I'm seeing the shift over here, guys, from for you. I'm seeing a shift because you are tired. You know what, what is what is this guy said? Um, I am tired and I'm not going to take this anymore. And I kind of like see that over here clearly. You coming into this phase that everything you look at is like, okay like wait a minute I keep getting these results why why I'm getting these results like that so let me see the guidance and look at that again again you have the coffin you need to bury certain things certain things need to go and here is this rose that is actually now look nice and glowing and it's the motive that something looks actually really beautiful in this card it's actually really not scary and then we have another light on the rose over here and there is the magician the magician is basically representing mercury and this is that karmic thing so what is really good thing about it? look at this one and eight it's nine again that i see and then we have one and nine here so you are like just supposed to shift so the question here is are you going to close that door are you going to because like it looks to me there is like still confusion there are like still thoughts of the past and still kind of like undefined the future there is some kind of turmoil um lots of kind of like questions why questions kind of happened um, maybe you guys felt kind of like loyalty because the strength also has that behind that towards something and now you're feeling why did that happen now the magician is generally hey I can create anything I guess you guys know that you have to know it on some level you need to more or less ground this whole thing the eight of pentacles never talks about uh, you know well you know we air signs we can have these big plans i'm going to be a billionaire by you know like i mean tomorrow at 11 o'clock the truth is <laughs> we still might get there if we kind of like don't have such high expectations on ourselves and if we pace ourselves out over the long period of time because look at this both cards have this light coming down and at some point there is going to be this need of being moved forward because we are kind of like in the situations there is like kind of like a need of kind of like shedding this universal light it's not you it's not your vision as you can see this is kind of like something that is much much higher than yourself and it's kind of like you know this whole story about dying when you die you see the light etc it that's kind of like it keeps repeating and then you were dead and then you resurrect again kind of a thing over here for you and i think this is what's happening <coughs> this can be a virgo and this is another gemini i guess and um it is really calling for you to understand what you can do and how far you can go it's kind of like a really important to see that this kind of like keeps repeating in this reading so let me see about your twin flame and there you go you had eight and then you have a nine and six and again you had five well five of swords still very close kind of like it's it's again the battle and the winning the battle and uh, losing the battle I think in your case now what is about this like soulmate? The soulmate is more than willing to to be intimate with you, and they kind of like see that as as a victory. And now I have like this lion again showing off, right? Sort of like it is here. It's kind of crowned. Maybe you know they need to be pampered all the time, but also so should you. And it looks like there is like a win 
lose situation. Nine of Pentacles, right after this, can you pay attention to detail? Now, somebody paid attention to the details who was way too far. In this basically scene, if you really, really think about it, even the Pentacles that they're like standing, like I mean, nowhere, everything is like fake. Everything looks like it's just kind of a setup. And maybe you're being set up in this relationship because look, he's just really looking at it over there. And somebody is like really not caring about you needing a comfort, about you needing this. It looks like somebody really wants to win. And I'm wondering if, if there was a situation, guys, and again, I have another nine. If there was a situation, guys, that, uh, and again, six and three is nine, that you know like you feel that just to keep the peace you kind of like lead, need to let go of certain things and that somebody's again to go back on the beginning of this conversation has this like huge ego you need to really ask yourself if this is even sustainable in the situation because again this is what's happening so let me see the karma card over here yes especially if you're a woman that main male might go through a situation that is actually not their lucky turn so there is this karma card there is this confirmation of your twin flame but there is a somebody who is again deceptive and another seven that we see over here and ten seventeen eighteen one and eight is nine again it is telling you to wrap up the loose ends with this person the main male kind of like who is coming out here on karma it's certainly karmic soulmate definitely also this is my karma card but something is going to be revealed that this person probably didn't mean much didn't mean didn't mean how to be supportive because look at this this is just like hey you know what again you have this kind of like team of the moonlight somebody kind of like walking away toward what they want and it is kind of like really interesting with seven of swords is always talking about somebody taking care of their own needs and it looks like if this person has a turn for the worse right now from from what it looks like over here uh, they'll be willing to do anything just to, to dig themselves out so be very careful and on the lookout that they would not try to take something away from you i have pulled one more card over here for you to seal the reading so but dear gemini to get your private reading you know where to find me catchtarot.ca all this information is there and if you're still here and you're not subscribed please please press this so you got this loyal heart and it's a really really lovely card with two crown owls so let me just read to you what is basically saying it says are you stubborn <laughs> or overly tenacious about an idea or have you become so attached to something that you just don't know how to let it go could it be that it's become so much a part of you that you wouldn't know who you are without it now it is time to look at outdated beliefs all ideas and misplaced loyalties and that's what i kind of like told you right from the get-go betrayal is only a signal which i think you're going to realize that to that it's time to prune away all who don't deserve your trust and have no place in your life be new think new and open your heart to new things let go of the old and all of your attachments spirit has awesome plans for you make some room so this absolutely makes sense you guys are going probably through the thick and thin because something has been bothering you for quite a while some of you are going even in a legal directive but some of you are really changing and that's what most people understand that we air signs can change as well but when we change the shift is a little bit bigger so everything is suggesting a shift over here and it's going to be you are either on my team or you are out of my life kind of like a really simple thing that we need to know but if you're on my team it's going to be transparent it's going to be that we will remove the masks and I, I just cannot be you know feeling that I'm constrained at every single kind of like point where I turn so my dear Gemini I hope you know you're getting some 
whatever uh, guidance, uh, hopefully wisdom out of it. And would love to hear your comments and would like to kind of like see what is in the situation. It seems to be very tricky. But as I said, to get your private reading, you can always contact me via my website. All the best, guys. Love you. Thank <music> you.